a passionate dispute over the use of parametric versus non-parametric methods for the analysis of Likert scale data has raged for the past 80 years. The answer is not a simple yes or no, but is related to hypotheses, objectives, risks, and paradigms. In this video, I will be presenting to you the arguments of the two sides of this dispute. The ordinalist, which believe that Likert scale data should be analyzed by non-parametric tests, and intervalist, which believe the other way around. So what is a Likert scale? The original Likert scale was developed in 1932 by Rancis Likert. He developed a 7-point bipolar agreement scale as a result. This scale has been used since then to measure people's opinions or attitudes on a variety of items and is probably the most widely used scale aside from dichotomous yes or no scale. If you want to get technical, the Likert scale is referring to the multi-item scale of data, whereas the individual items are called Likert items. Now, the question is, should you use parametric or non-parametric tests on a Likert scale data? Before we answer this question, it is important to know its measurement scale. Let's review the definition of ordinal and interval scales. The ordinal scale has the property of both identity and magnitude. Each value on the ordinal scale has a unique meaning, and it has an ordered relationship to every other value on the scale. The honors rank that assigns each student a number, first honor, second honor, and so on, is measured through ordinal scale. Here, we only know who obtained greater or lower marks to whom, but we do not know by how much. We also do not know the actual marks obtained by anyone unless otherwise stated. Whereas, the interval scale of measurement has the properties of identity, magnitude, and equal intervals. By using this scale, one can know which of the two values is greater or smaller. It also enables us to know by how much the values are greater or smaller. Furthermore, the equal distances between attributes on an interval scale differ from an ordinal scale. What is the measurement scale of Likert scales? To answer that question, let's consider the following argument. For example, suppose we have a 5-point Likert scale. Suppose further, for the sake of argument, that Likert items are interval. It is easy to check that these items has both identity and magnitude because we can differentiate strongly disagree with disagree and we are also certain that strongly disagree is lower compared to disagree, neutral, agree, and strongly agree. However, we are not sure if the distance between strongly agree and disagree is equal to the distance between disagree and neutral, making equal interval characteristic questionable for this case. One may say that yes, the distance between strongly agree and disagree and disagree and neutral is equal by simply getting the difference between their numerical representation. Yet these numbers are just representations of each responses. I may simply replace these representations by any number. These are just conventional values that we are used to using. Therefore, we classify Likert items as ordinal. Since we classify Likert items as ordinal, ordinalists make a conclusion that one must use non-parametric tests for such kind of variables. Remember that to use parametric tests, the variable's measurement scale should be at least interval, and Likert items which are used to get the scales violate this assumption. Ordinalists also say that you cannot also use mean and standard deviation to summarize Likert items. For instance, you have two Likert items and the responses are strongly agree and neutral. Mathematically, what does it mean to add strongly agree and neutral? Then worse is you divide it by two. 
it is like you are getting the average of the numbers found on the jersey of a basketball player. Sure, you get an answer, but what does it mean? Also, it is not clear that the average of strongly agree and neutral is agree. Similarly, the average of agree and strongly agree is not agree and a half. Simply numbering the response levels does not make the responses interval or ratio data. According to ordinalists, to appropriately analyze ordinal data, such as Likert items, it is suggested to use median and interquartile range or mode among other appropriate tools instead of using mean and standard deviation. But wait, why are they using parametric tests for Likert scales? Kari Fio and Perla are among the strongest supporters for treating Likert type responses as interval data, going so far as to suggest that the Likert responses approximate ratio data. They do make the important distinction between Likert scales compared to the answers to individual questions using Likert type responses. In their view, all true scales must necessarily include multiple questions on a given topic whose summative score reflects the scale or measurement and contend that a minimum of six items is necessary to create a reliable scale that measures some construct. Any item comprising this scale can have a response format which might or might not be a Likert type response. Carifio and Perla also argue that much of the criticism of Likert scales confuses the response format from the actual multi-component measurement. In their view, the individual items in a scale are not independent and autonomous, but rather must be connected in such a way as to yield a single unified result. This unified result will be more reliable and reflect the underlying construct better than will any individual item. They make the useful explanatory observation that a Likert scale need to use Likert type responses to its individual questions but could use a visual analog response. Consequently, Carifio and Perla make a strong argument against the statistical or interpretative analysis of individual responses, suggesting that the summative assessment of a series of items is the proper item of analysis and that such a summative assessment yields interval or ratio data. In addition, Norman, Wu, and Leung provides compelling evidence with actual examples that parametric tests not only can be used with ordinal data, such as data from Likert scales, but also that parametric tests are generally more robust than non-parametric tests. That is, parametric tests tend to give the right answer even when statistical assumptions such as a normal distribution of data, are violated, even to an extreme degree. Educators and researchers also commonly create several Likert-type items, group them into a survey scale, and then calculate a total score or mean score for the scale items. Often, this practice is recommended particularly when researchers are attempting to measure less concrete concepts such as training motivation, patient satisfaction, and physician's confidence, where a single survey item is unlikely to be capable of fully capturing the concept being assessed. In conclusion, I highly recommend that researchers determine how they will describe and analyze their data as a first step in planning their research. Both sides Ordinalists and intervalists have compelling arguments and it is up to the researcher to decide which school of thought will they follow. For as long as you can defend your choice with peer-reviewed research, most likely you'll be fine with your decision. That's it for our video. Thank you very much and have a great day.